Phoenix. Here we've got Monk in Order of the Phoenix. A really interesting problem. I think Order of the Phoenix was one of the worst books. But let's have a look at the problem. Voldemort has a big army. Oh, a brave problem. Mentioning him by name. So he has maintained his people in end rows to fight Harry's army. Each row contains the heights of the fighters and is sorted in non-decreasing order, except for the first row, which may contain the heights of the fighters in any order. During the war, Voldemort can perform one of two operations. He can either remove a fighter from any row, or he can add a new fighter to any row. Now note that Voldemort will never remove a fighter from an empty row, and he will also always add a fighter to the end of the row. And we know that every row from the second row onwards is in non-decreasing or increasing order. Meaning, whenever Voldemort adds a fighter to one of those rows, he is going to be the tallest fighter in that row. Harry has a special wand that can kill exactly n fighters in one go. Uh, something doesn't sit right with me. Harry doesn't kill. Let's call it disarm. He has a wand that can disarm n fighters. But with the following conditions. First, exactly one fighter should be chosen from each row. In other words, a row can't be empty. The first fighter can only be chosen from the first row, the second from the second row, and so on. Basically, the ith fighter has to be chosen from the ith row, and the order in which we choose these i fighters has to be strictly increasing. So, if we choose a fighter from the first row, the fighter we choose from the second row has to be taller than the previous one. The fighter from the third row has to be taller than the second fighter, and so on. Now, Harry wants to know whether he can disarm end fighters using the special wand. As Harry is busy in fighting Voldemort, he gives his task to Monk. Here's our input format. We've got three possible inputs. Whenever V equals zero, you'll get another number indicating the row number. That means Voldemort is removing a fighter from the end of that row. V equals zero is basically a pop operation. V equals 1 is a push operation. You'll be given two integers. One is the row number and one is the height of the fighter himself. That fighter will go to the end of that row. For V equals 2, Monk needs to know whether Harry can use that wand or not. So whenever V equals 2 is present, we've got to print either yes or no. Let's have a look at this input right here. 2 is the number of rows. Now, the first number in each row indicates the number of fighters in that row. So, 3 means the first row is going to have 3 fighters. And this doesn't have to be in any order, ascending, descending. It can be in any random order. From the second row onwards, however, the 3 fighters have to be in increasing order. Now, 8 is our next input. 8 is the number of queries that follow. 0, 1 indicates we've popped a fighter out of the first row. Our first row is 3, 5, 4. If 4 is popped out, our first row is now 3 and 5. Now our input is 2. Can Harry use his special wand? Wingardium Leviosa says no, he cannot. That's because regardless of whether we select 3 or 5, the next number is not going to be greater than either 3 or 5. We cannot select two fighters whose heights are in increasing order, one from row 1 and one from row 2. 111 one, one indicates that a death eater of height 1 is going to go to the end of the first row. Our first row is now 351. Now when we ask Monk, can the wand be used? His reply is yes. That's because we can select one from the first row and two from the second row. And our conditions are all satisfied. Now if you have a look at the other four queries, you'll be able to extrapolate why no and yes are the outputs. Guys, here you can see the code along with an explanation of how the code works. It's going to be a split screen format. The top half is going to show the working of the code and the bottom half, the code itself. So we start by taking the input and we declare a stack. Now for i in range n, we append all the elements to the stack. And we start from one because the zero element just tells us how many elements are there in that array. 
Next, we take the number of queries and we build a first min stack. This stack is going to consist of every element from the first array. And when we build it, we're going to ensure that that stack only has numbers in increasing order. The top of the stack is going to contain the least element and the bottom of the stack, the greatest element. How are we going to do that? Now we know the bottom element is the zeroth element. So we move on from the first element to the last element in the first row. If that element is less than the stack's top element, then it can go on top. That's because it's not violating any rules. Our stack will still be in increasing order if I'm moving from top to bottom. However, if that element is greater than our stack, then we're going to duplicate whatever element is there on top, and we're going to put that one on top. Now, why are we doing this? Even if that element is popped, we'll still know what the minimum element is up until that point. Now, as we iterate through our queries, we see that if our input is zero, that means we simply pop an element from our stack. And if it's popped from the first stack, then we've got to pop first min as well. Why are we not maintaining minimum stacks for the rest of the rows? That's because they're in ascending order. We already know the leftmost will be the minimum element. The rightmost will be the greatest element. If our input is one, then we've got to append an element to the end of the given row. And again, if the given row is the first row, we need to know whether that incoming element is the minimum element, which is why we perform this operation. Finally, the last possible input, that is two. We have a check. If check is ever one, we're going to print no. If any stack is empty, that's what these two lines do. They check if any stack is empty. If it is directly, we print no. If it's not, then we've got to check if we can select fighters or death eaters in ascending order, starting from row one and ending at row n. So we start from row one and we select the minimum possible fighter. That's where this first min comes in handy. This helps us in identifying the minimum fighter because he will always be on top. Now we run a loop from one to n. That's because we've already considered the zeroth row, that is first min, and we've showed its value in key. If key is greater than stack of i of minus one, each of these rows are sorted in ascending order. So if key is greater than the last value, that means key is greater than the greatest value. So we cannot find any taller fighter in that row, which is why we say check is one and we directly print. No. If that's not the case, then we perform a binary search on stack of i with key as the key. We've seen the same binary search performed in most of the searching problems in CodeMonk. Let me reiterate what it does. Essentially, this binary search doesn't search for the element. It searches for the position that's just greater than that element. That's what this entire while loop does. At the end of this, SI lands on the location that's just greater than key, which is why we return SI. And we continue repeating the iterations again and again until we reach the last row. If it's managed to get through every single iteration without ever hitting this condition, that means we found a bunch of valid elements. We found n valid fighters, which is why we print no straight away. Let's see if this code works. Sample has been passed and submit tells us. Yep, 
that our code works beautifully. Guys, that's the code. If you liked it, make sure to hit the three buttons. The complexity is n log n. That's been the solution to this problem, monk and order of the phoenix. If you liked it, you know what to do. Make sure to leave your comments down below. I'll see you all in the next problem.